Good day everybody, RC Grabag here. Welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, a lot got done. I put down the two-track mainline as well as installing all of its turnouts and crossovers. I installed the mainline bus wiring and attached the track feeder wires to it. And finally, I assembled and installed the DCC components for the track power and block detection. And with that, we were able to see some trains running for the first time on the layout. So after hitting some of these milestones, I figured I'd switch up gears a bit and start working on some scenery. Now when it comes to scenery, there are all kinds of techniques and materials that one can use. I'm going to show a couple of scenic processes in this video, but suffice it to say, I'll be using these and many other techniques as the layout progresses. Now what you're seeing here is a hard shell scenic base that I'll be creating in this video, along with some rock castings. I'm going to be using this aluminum window screen as a base for the hard shell. It's really easy to work with. You can cut it quite easily with scissors or a utility knife. And because it's aluminum, you can work it into various shapes to form land contours and it will hold those shapes. And to cover the screen, I'll be using this Woodland Scenics plaster cloth. I managed to get this stuff pretty cheap through a friend, but you can find other cost-effective sources online. One of the first things I'm going to do here is mark out some locations for some tunnel portals. And I have a few of these nice plaster cast portals that I got from a friend of mine who was kind enough to lend me some molds to make them. And I'm just going to mark their planned location for now because I'd like to get them painted and weathered before final installation. And in the marked locations, I just made these wooden frames to which I can staple the screen wire and mount the finished portals. So now I'm ready to begin putting some window screen in place, so I'm just making some rough measurements of a small area to start. I don't need to be super precise here, and there's plenty of time and ways to make small changes later on. So, using my rough measurements and some scissors, I cut out some window screen, and I'm simply stapling it in place to the sub roadbed. Now here I'm rerouting some of the main bus wires, just to make it easier to access after the hard shell is in place. And this is where all those solderless Wago connectors and the reusable wire clips come in handy and make the job super simple. And back to the screen wire, I'm just repeating previous steps of making some rough measurements, cutting out the screen wire and stapling it in place. I'm also using an inexpensive cordless electric staple gun here to attach the screen to the sub road bed. With the screen wire in place, I can now begin to apply the plaster cloth. The Woodland Scenics product already comes in pre-cut sheets, but I like to cut them in half just to make them a little bit smaller and easier to handle. And using a regular pair of scissors, you can cut several sheets at one time. Once the sheets are cut to size, I simply take one and I dip it into a plastic paint roller tray filled with water. And I want to ensure that the plaster cloth sheet is completely saturated with water. Then I just take the sheet and apply it to the window screen, smoothing it out with my fingers. I'd also like to point out that I have applied masking tape over the nearby track to protect it from the inevitable drips coming off of the plaster cloth as I'm putting it in place. I also have a plastic tarp on the floor to protect it as well. And now it's just a matter of repeating the steps with the plaster cloth, cutting the sheets in half, dipping them in water, and applying them to the screen. And now I like to put on a second coat of plaster cloth, and that's what I'm doing here. And I'm on the other side of the layout now, opposite the area I had just done. Again, just putting the window screen in place, and then covering with two layers of plaster cloth. And here's what the two areas look like after the hard shell base is completed. Now with the hard shell scenery in place, I have two areas with steep walls that will be ideal for using rock castings to make it appear as though the mainline rights of way were cut through the mountainside. And for the rock castings, I'm using these latex rubber molds from an outfit in California called Bragdon Enterprises. And they make all sorts of rubber rock molds, which you can use to create a variety of rock formations on your layout. And I also have some smaller Woodland Scenics rock molds. For the rock casting material itself, I'll be using this UltraCal 30 gypsum cement, which is ideal for making castings. I bought this stuff in 50 pound bags, and each bag, by the way, fits conveniently into one of these 5 gallon plastic buckets that you can see here. I got these buckets from my local home improvement store for about $4 a piece, and they're a great way to keep the moisture out of the UltraCal while it's in storage. 
So for casting rocks, I like to start with creating a bed of sand, and here I have a plastic storage bin filled with regular play sand, and the idea here is to use it as a surface to support the rock mold as I'm pouring the altar cal. I'm also using a plastic trash bag as well here to keep the sand off the back of the mold, and to capture any casting material that might drip over the edge. And as you can see here, the sand allows me to sort of press the mold into it and create an indentation that supports the mold somewhat better than a flat surface would. Now for mixing the UltraCal, I'm using these rubber mixing pots from Woodland Scenics. And the nice thing about these pots being made out of rubber is that if any of your casting material were to harden in the pot, you can easily break it free by collapsing the pot or just squeezing and twisting it in general. There's a link below in the video description where you can get one of these sets. When mixing the UltraCal, or any casting material for that matter, be sure to follow the instructions. One of the more important steps when mixing UltraCal is to start by adding the UltraCal to the water, not the other way around. This is to ensure that the material comes in contact with the water evenly and completely. So here I'm just gently sprinkling the UltraCal into the water, allowing it to soak for a bit before mixing. Now, I'm mixing by hand here, but the instructions also encourage the use of a mechanical mixer as well, so if you have a common household hand mixer, it works well for this purpose. The UltraCal provides a good amount of working time, so I can leave it sit for a bit while I prepare the molds for casting. I want to be sure I can remove the cast rock from the molds easily, and to do that, I first spray the molds with ordinary window cleaner. It makes an excellent mold release, and the rock castings come apart from the molds very easily. And I'm spraying both the front and the back of the mold, just in case any of the UltraCal drips over the edge and goes around to the back, I'll be able to remove it easily enough. And now I'm just pressing the molds into the sand a bit so they have a decent amount of support. And now with the molds ready for casting, I take my UltraCal mix and pour it into the molds, just making sure I do it as evenly as possible. Now, once the UltraCal begins to set up, you'll want to take the mold while the casting material is still pliable, but firm enough to stay in the mold and apply it to your hard shell. This allows you to press the mold along the various contours in your hard shell, and the resulting rock casting will follow that contour nicely. Now, how long the casting material takes to reach this desired consistency varies according to the material you're using, and the ambient temperature in your work area, and things like that. Now I'm spraying the area where I plan to apply the rock casting with some water to help with the adhesion. So here I've got the mold containing the partially set casting pressed up against the hard shell, and I'm going to hold it there for a bit until it can stay there on its own. It doesn't take too long. And now I'm going to let the casting harden for another hour or two, at which time I can gently peel off the mold to reveal my casting against the hard shell. And you can see now how well the window cleaner works as a mold release by how easily the mold is removed from the casting. And there you have a beautiful rock casting. And you can see that natural gray color of the UltraCal. Now with several rock castings in place, you're going to have some gaps between them that you'll need to fill. And for some of the larger gaps, I just like to use some plain old paper towels dipped in the UltraCal to use as an initial gap filler. So here I've mixed up some UltraCal and I'm pouring it into a plastic paint roller pan for which to dip the towels in. And now I'll just take one of the cut up paper towel pieces and dip it in the UltraCal, trying to get it evenly coated. 
And then I'll just tuck it into one of the gaps between my rock castings. You could also just skip the paper towel step, but I find it helps keep the filler in place and lessens the amount of the ultra cow material needed. And with the paper towel fillers in place and for some of the smaller gaps, I just mix up some more ultra cow and I just begin filling the areas with the mix. As it sets up, I can begin poking it with various implements to blend it into the nearby castings. And this part isn't an exact science, it's just continuing to poke, shape, and carve until you get the look you want and the castings are blended together. My favorite tools for blending rock castings is a set of artist palette knives that come in all sorts of shapes and sizes to make this job a lot easier. And as always, there's a link below for where you can get these things. Here is a completed section of castings, all blended together and ready for the next step. I'll continue to do some more blending at the top and bottom, and then I'll follow that with various paint and dry brush techniques and other assorted detail for the final effect. I'd just like to point out that although I've shown a few techniques here, I'll be using many different techniques as the opportunities present themselves. One of the methods that I plan to explore in more detail is the lightweight hard shell and rock casting method promoted by Bragdon Enterprises, the same outfit that makes the rock molds I'm using in this video. Joel from Bragdon was kind enough to send me some samples of their resin hard shell and rock castings that for one, are very lightweight, less than a tenth of the weight of the same casting done in plaster. I plan on using these products in some of my harder to reach areas where I'll have an access hash that would work more easily if it was light in weight. I also imagine I'll be doing some scenery in diorama style, where most of the work will be done on a workbench away from the layout, and then dropped into place on the layout. Seems like that would be another ideal use of lightweight scenery. So that's it for the railroading portion of the video, and as you can see, there's lots yet to do. So there's plenty more video content to come, and I hope you'll find it interesting, entertaining, and informative. If you like what you see, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. And as always, stick around for some non-railroading random content coming up next. This time, we're headed off to Finland's Lapland region for a winter adventure. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Jen, let's step inside the Arctic Circle as, as delineated by this, this line. Huh? <laughs> There's a one giant snowman there. Bed instead of a block of ice. Blue turn. Mm-hmm.